Nobody said five by five in the chat, so I don't know if they can hear me or not. Maybe it just started. Maybe it didn't fix the eyebrows. Derpy for the win said five by five. Good morning, everybody. I'm that bear guy from the internet. This is Coffee Time with Bear. Hold on, let me turn my coffee cup so the logo is showing. There we go. We call this product placement in the industry. Ah. Where can you get that product placement? Oh, yeah. Where can bearindependent.com? That's right. Made of fine coffee cup materials. It works. It keeps the coffee warm. What's up, shop stuff? Good morning, everybody. Probably time for a beard trim, or at least a mustache trim. Shalom, brother Mad Kelp. Good morning. Now, <clears throat> a lot of y'all are probably, Shalom Tommy Salter, are probably uh, familiar with the, the brief, the Intel brief that Barry is supposed to provide to me for free Monday, Wednesday, Friday, when I say so. Um, you know, life doesn't always work out that way. And here lately, scheduling wise between new baby, uh, building a house for me and my wife and my family and building Caleb house and some other things on the back end associated with five businesses and two ministries. That's just not been the case. And I've told y'all in the past, there's going to come a time. I don't know when it is, but I can feel it intuitively. It's going to come a time where I'm not going to be able to sit in front of this camera as much as I used to because of the other things that I have to do in the real world, like build things and rescue kids and restore kids and be a husband and a father and you know, all that stuff. Guten Morgan, Patriot Plumber. So in lieu of Intel reports, we have here what we call uh, Coffee Time with Bear, which is a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more uh, conversational, laid back. Let's kind of plow through the news sites, see if there's anything interesting. Uh, save you the time and the headache of having to look at all of the BS articles that are out there. There's a bunch. Good morning, Liberty, 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 and Dr. Trevor Wilkins as well. He doesn't have a theme song. Doc, we got to work on that. Um, so the, I do have uh, three things that I wanted to look at, maybe a fourth thing, um, and we'll have a conversation, okay? Okay. Uh, first, I wanted to give you guys a, a little bit of a Caleb House update as far as construction is concerned. And then uh, there's an article over at RT, Russia Today, Russian propaganda, about NATO being in a pre-war posture. I want to talk a little bit about that. And then, of course, I'm sure you've already heard about the 7.4 magnitude earthquake on eastern Taiwan. Oh, you haven't heard? What, have you been raising a child or something? Oh, well, all right then. I'll tell you all about it. Stay tuned, my love. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, and then also Haiti. It's a Pantera song. Nice. Is it walk? Respect. Walk. Walk on homeboy. So, anyway, Caleb House, yesterday morning, um, we had half a dozen brethren on site, trusted individuals. When I say trusted, I mean like I would would and have bet my lives on them before. Uh, we have a lot of context. Um, we were out at Caleb House, and we flew the trusses for the barn. We're putting up a 40-foot wide, 80-foot long, 19-foot finished finished wall height barn. Uh, it was really more of a shop building, a couple of roll up doors, a couple of man doors. And we got the trusses up yesterday. Now we have been <clears throat> wanting to get these trusses up for six or eight weeks, but Oklahoma, Oklahoma really hard in that every time we had scheduled to put these trusses up, it would then rain monstrously for days in a row. And that's not great. Um, one of the reasons it's not great is access to the site. 
Uh, I still have a lot of work to do when it comes to grading and uh, dealing with the water runoff. And we're mitigating a lot of that water runoff through consultations with Nick Ferguson, uh, Mr. Permaculture Guy. He's an awesome guy. And also the permaculture consultant, William Bond, who's the son of Billy Bond from Permapastures. Um, and the both of them have poured into us out there as far as how to shape the land to capture the water that's running across it rather than just have it run across. So good morning, Sarah. So uh, Texas Hooch says, OMG, I just checked out the swag. Yeah, there's BI swag at baronindependent.com, y'all. They're like, I ain't, I ain't even kidding. It's there. Bunch. There's a whole bunch. A whole bunch. Um, but anyway, so I have a lot of work to do as far as road building is concerned and uh, water mitigation is concerned. Um, but when the soil is soft and you're using a Skytrack 1054, which is a 10,000 pound lift capacity, 54 foot lift height to boom over the 19 foot sidewall with trusses, you don't want to get all flippy all of a sudden because the soil is soft. And so that's been an issue. But yesterday we got all those trusses flown, which was cool because the wind was gusting to about 20 miles an hour. So that made it interesting. And uh, Brett Spencer says that biblical manhood shirt is fire. Thank you. The artwork is by our brother, Alex Toter, who's part of the Bear Nation. He does incredible artwork. You should reach out to him if you need any artwork done. Uh, concept was mine, implemented by my wife. So it's a team effort. Um, and uh, let's see. Ufta says upstate 717. Yeah. So some of our guys, uh, they, there was a little bit of um, trepidation, if you will. And so I reassured them. I said, hey, I've had winds three times as fast at heights 20 times this height before, and I'm still here. I survived. It'll be okay. And they survived, and everybody was okay. Praise the Father. No injuries. That, just nothing. It was great. We got it done. So trusses are up. The footers for Care House 1 uh, have been poured, and the stem wall for, for uh, Care House 1 is formed, and it will be poured today which means in within about 14 days, we're going to have a house sitting at Care House One will be on site at Caleb House, which is super cool. Uh, I'm very excited about that. And then after we have Care House One set, we will begin the process for Care House Two. The pad for the administrative building is uh, I've put all the dirt where it needs to go there, but I've yet to track the dozer. Thank you, brother, who lent us a dozer in perpetuity. I've yet to track the dozer across the top of it because there's a difference between flat and level. They're not the same thing. <laughs> and uh, if you're going to build a building and pour concrete and all that, it should be level. Uh, square plumb and level is a thing in construction. Flat does not cut it. So I have to make it level, not just flat. In my ample free time. Um, let's see what else is going on there. So admin building, we've got the takeoffs for drying in the admin building done. And dry in basically means uh, like none of the none of the plumbing, electrical, uh, mechanical, HVAC systems, uh, dry, none of the drywall, mud tape, texture bed, insulation, paint, trim work, door, interior doors, uh, fixtures, furnishings, lighting, none of that. But it does mean uh, foundation, framing, roof, exterior, doors and windows, and porch, because there's going to be a significant porch on this thing. Got all that priced out, and it's still looking like the admin building is going to track at a total cost of about a million bucks. And but it's a significantly sized building. It's two stories, 4,000 square foot per story. And you're probably asking yourself, why in the HE double hockey sticks do you need a building that size? And the answer to that is pretty cool, actually. It's because the ground floor um, will contain a 23-hour intake facility because of some of the regulations that we have to deal with doing what we do on the Caleb House side. And it, there's competing regulations issued by different uh, agencies like Homeland Security, uh, HSI, investigations 
is one. Uh, the attorney general is another. Then Child Protective Services is a third. And then there may be local, state, regional uh, regulation as well. And so there's a we're navigating a pathway forward that allows us to satisfy to the best of our ability the regulations and requirements from all these different entities so that we can work with slash receive kids from, if needed, all these different entities so that we're not building a single use tool. We're building a multi-use tool that can have the most applicability in the most situations to help the most kids possible. Um, and doing that in such a way that doesn't open us up to being regulated by nine different agencies rather than one, uh, which you guys know how I feel about the government. If the government did their job well, we wouldn't have to do this in the first place, but we don't need to jump into that rabbit hole. So ground floor of the uh, admin building contains a 23 hour intake facility because you can't take somebody in and move them immediately. Shalom Glock 316 immediately to long term in many cases. So there has to be a stutter step where they come into a 23 hour facility, then they move on from there into a long term facility. In our long term facility, there will be uh, well, in our intake facility, there will be trained, licensed, qualified medical professionals, an office for law enforcement professionals, and a medical examination room. And the reason that's really important, in addition to housing for the individuals as they come into the 23-hour facility, the reason that's important is if when we have to perform what's called a SANE exam, S-A-N-E, which is a very unfortunate acronym for essentially... Uh, when somebody has had the big R word done to them, the evidence that is collected, it's called a big R word kit. That's the same exam. Okay. We can have a medically qualified, registered, licensed individual perform that exam in a controlled environment and immediately pass that evidence, because that's what it is, evidence into the hands of a law enforcement partner who has jurisdiction who can run it up the chain of command lateral over to wherever this child came from and use that evidence that's been collected per procedure, per protocol that's approved by all these different regulatory bodies with a clear chain of custody lateral over to the jurisdiction where the scumbag is and then use that evidence so that these scumbags aren't getting a slap on the wrist for trafficking children they're going away for 18, 20, 36, 90 years. So that's part of why that facility, because it think about if you had to build a doctor's office, what would that cost, right? And then in addition to that, on that ground floor, we'll have offices for our white collar professionals, our trauma therapists and our attorneys, our legal team and <clears throat> the on-site director, et cetera, et cetera, as well as a conference room for when we you know, need to get together, kitchenette and blah, 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 blah. And then upstairs, there's a couple more offices and then there's living space for the on-site director because I believe that if you're going to be a part of what we're doing, you need to be there. Um, you need to live it like the rest of us are living it. You need to live it. Uh, plus, Spanic control, it's much easier to um, deal with things as they arise if you're there on site. Uh, additionally, um, it's less of an OPSEC issue, operational security, because POL, pattern of life, is a thing. If you have the same vehicle, driving the same route, going to the same place at the same time, Monday through Friday, every week, <laughs> That's pattern of life it makes it easy, very easy to narrow down who this person is and where they're going. Well, if they live on the property and they don't leave all that much, that makes that that much harder. And um, a lot of the people who were in possession of these children before we were consider those children their product. And oftentimes there's retaliatory efforts from the criminal cartels that were trafficking these kids in the first place. So operational security is a thing, which is why in the Barndo that I was just discussing with you, there's a um, there will be in the barn, there will be a Barndo for a caretaker. And that is the guy with the weed eater and the AR-15. Remember, we've talked about that guy before, him and several other people who will be on property. Remember, we're not building a prison. This isn't a prison. It's a restoration facility, basically building a neighborhood in the woods. Um 
It's basically what I'm doing. Um, but FAFO is the general rule for the property. So the Bondo is moving forward. We're making progress there. Uh, we've had uh, some good conversation with the power company about being able to provide the amount of power in that area that we're going to need. Um, and then admin building pad site is in process. Concrete is being poured for care house one today. Care house one is built. It needs to be moved to property and that will probably happen within the next two weeks or so. And then it's more dozer time for me because I got to make more spots for more houses to go. So journey of John said ruckus patches. Has anybody got theirs? Um, so John, they were supposed to be handed out at the ruckus when we received the patches from our vendor we were unhappy with them so the vendor is doing remakes and when they come in and they're approved by us we will be mailing them out individually to each person who was at the ruckus because i don't want to give you a subpar patch that's going to fall apart that's not really what we're about so Hey, Bear, have a wedding to go to on the 8th in Arkansas. I'll be in the wedding. They want it outdoors for the eclipse, but may be forced inside due to weather. Any advice for security? Bro, I hope you really like these people. Uh, that's traveling on the 8th in the beaten zone of the eclipse is probably not recommended. Um, any advice for security? Yeah, I wouldn't be traveling if I could help it immediately before or immediately after. Uh, think about basic things. Lighting, access and egress, med stuff. Like if somebody trips and falls and breaks their leg, you're probably not going to get an ambulance to you immediately. So like medical stuff and not just, you know, shot, stabbed, blown up. You know, if one of the chefs in the kitchen accidentally cuts themselves and they wrap it with a, a dish rag until the ambulance arrives, it could be hours before the ambulance arrives. So that's something to think about. Um, people behaving badly possible during the eclipse, but, you know, S2, not S2, I'm sorry, Suspicious Observers had a video that he put out yesterday, I believe, about the eclipse. And I, I really appreciate Ben's practicality sometimes. He essentially said, look, there's on average five eclipses per year that cross uh, the United States of America on average. Or is it the Earth? I don't know. Five eclipses per uh, year. And the world doesn't end during any of these other eclipses. So why is everybody hyping up this eclipse so much? He said, I'm just going to come out and say it. If something bad happens during this eclipse, eclipse, it was the government that did it. So, yeah, it's the earth. Thanks, Oki. Shalom. Good morning. Um, I don't know, man. Uh, my, my eclipse policy is stay home. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stay home. So if I couldn't stay home, I would know how to get back from where I am using surface roads. Uh, so maps, GPS, compass, that kind of thing. Um, and then... I'd probably have a three-day kit in my car, honestly, because y'all forbid something stupid happened if I had to get back home again and it took me three days, I could do it. You know, and then other than that, your EDC, head on a swivel, you know. Um, I don't expect people to be just wiling out during the eclipse and acting like crazy people, uh, by and large. But, you know, if you live in Detroit, Chicago, L.A., New York, Dallas, Houston, it's possible. If you live in the woods, it's less possible. So, <laughs> Colonel Lebowski, the world can't end Monday. Rockstar 69 is having a birthday and cake. Well, there you go. So, I, Rockstar is having a cake. So, uh, Howitzer, good morning. Says, go camping at your bug out spot. Yeah. Um. That's a good word, Hillbilly. Fill your tanks, top off your water supply. 100%. Like, I'm, all the vehicles should have fuel in them. But I, I honestly believe this big eclipse, that's the apocalypse, is going to be a nothing burger. And if it's not, I agree with Ben from Suspicious Observers. If it's not, it's because the government decided that they didn't want it 
to be a nothing burger. So they use the opportunity to make it something else. <clears throat> so that's Caleb House construction update ongoing. Uh, we are being good stewards of your blessings. We appreciate you very much. You guys know the drill. CalebHouse.org. Caleb with a K. If you want to continue to support what we're doing. And I can't tell you the details, um, but I can tell you the team in the field is kicking a shit ton of ass. Like, big clap hand for the team in the field. They're doing an awesome job, doing their job, jamming up bad guys, rescuing kids. Um, and I, I don't like the fact that I can't tell you the details because I really don't want to be one of those, trust me, everything's great, now give me more money. Right, because I, I think that's some some sleazy stuff right there, snake oil salesman stuff. But I legitimately can't tell you the details of what they're doing in the field for two reasons. One, victim services. There's people involved whose identities don't need to be known on the internet. Um, two, operational security. If I tell you what we're doing and how we're doing it, then the scumbags that are doing this stuff, some of whom watch the show, know what we're doing, and then they know how to. They can develop protocols to counter what we're doing. So I just, I just can't tell you. Um, and that there's been certain operations. I'm like, man, when this thing, when this one wraps up, I'm, I can't wait to tell the bear nation about this, but intelligence drives operations, right? It doesn't wrap up. It just leads on to a follow on thing, which leads on to a follow on thing, which leads on to a follow on thing, which leads on to a follow on thing. So. Beartron says, it's Bear's fault that I am now slowly replacing all my socks with covert thread. And thank you for the socks at Refuge Ruckus, by the way. 50% off on their site right now on socks. You know, Beartron, I was going to bring that up. Uh, CovertThreads.com is 50% off right now. And um, might I be a shill for covert threads? Maybe. It's Howitzer Hill who told me about them, though, to begin with. And just some proof. Boom. Look at that. Look at that sexy gam right there. Covert threats. Show my legs again. I'm trying to get them to buy a coffee mug from the website, honey, so we can build this house. Sometimes you got to show a little skin. It's the entertainment industry, you know? So, yeah, covert threats. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. Uh, yeah, 50% off at their website right now. Um, another, while we're on the subject, an American made company uh, that uh, you guys and girls might consider checking out. I've been talking with the founder uh, of last couple, three weeks. He's a guy named Charlie. He's a, he's a fine, nice young man who uh, left the insurance industry to st start a company called the Naughty Dog Bed Company. And essentially, like him and his roommate uh, in college, their dogs were constantly destroying dog beds. And he's like, there's got to be a way. And so he made one uh, out of like a thousand D, a thousand denier ballistic nylon Cordura. Um, so like mil spec dog beds made in America. I have four of them on my porch right now. They're uh, they're not cheap, but they do have a lifetime guarantee. And I've talked to the guy on the phone uh, a couple of times now and we text eh, three to five times a week. He's a good young man. Uh, with a good startup. And so you might consider it uh, the naughty dog bed if you need an American made dog bed. So, boop, 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 boop. And apparently, um, promo code bear works there and that'll get you 10% off. Um, and don't worry about me on the affiliate end. I don't care about affiliate stuff. It'll get you 10% off. So if you want a dog bed from them, uh, use promo code bear, apparently, allegedly. So a bed, my dog can't hump to death. You know what? Okay. It's worth trying. Sorry, Bear, I'm an elbow guy. Yankee watchdog. My bad. Well, here you go. Yeah. This is uh, Origin Raptor camo. Nano wool technology. All right, so NATO. NATO is uh, in a pre-war period, according to the UK defense minister. This is coming from RT, 
who says NATO members who fail to meet the 2% defense spending threshold are playing Russian roulette, according to Grant Shops. Uh, an article on the Telegraph on Wednesday, blah, blah, blah. The West is now in a pre-war world and therefore needs to raise their military expenditure. Uh, Trump said this, what, five years ago? Many NATO states have for years struggled to reach an agreed threshold of 2% GDP for defense, defense spending, but the process gained momentum after the start of the Ukraine crisis in 2014 and especially after the launch of Russia's military operation in 2022. Quote, we must look beyond that target and shore up our defenses, yet some nations are still failing to meet even the 2% target. That cannot continue. We can't afford to play Russian roulette with our future, end quote, Shaps wrote. Only 11 of NATO's 32 countries met the bloc's guideline of 2% last year. Let's see more blah, blah, blahs, blah, blah, blah. Polish Prime Minister Donald Tusk delivered a similar message last week when he said that Europe had entered a pre-war era in which any scenario is possible. Tusk insisted that, quote, no one in Europe will be able to feel safe, end quote, if the West does not provide Kiev with sufficient equipment and ammunition for the conflict with Russia. Getting a little tired of giving the government my money so they can give it to everybody else. I'm not going to lie. Like... You know what, Poland, if you're so worried about the war in Ukraine, maybe you guys go over there and spend your money and your blood and you do something about it. Just saying. I'm just I'm just throwing that out there. Like, at least be part of the team. Do I think the team should be doing anything over there? No, not really. But we already are. And, of course, there's that argument in for a penny, in for a pound, which is intentional. Right, you start with a penny so that you can play the in or they, the big they that air quote represent us in DC, start with a penny so they can play the in for a penny, in for a pound game. You know, just give them a hundred million bucks in aid to start, which I, I wouldn't, you know, I turn my nose up at a hundred million bucks in aid either. Okay, you know, make it a billion, make it three billion, make it 20 billion. Make it a hundred billion. Make it a couple hundred billion. Let's start floating the line that the total sunk cost of Ukraine in order to defeat Russia could rise to the threshold of one trillion U.S. dollars. Bro, knock it off. Like, I'm trying to build a house right now. I've got businesses to run. I've got four kids that I'd like to, like, have clothes and shoes and, like, you know, be able to, to like, grow up and make grandbabies for me one day. Like, stop. Just stop it. Just stop it. Echoing those remarks, UK Foreign Secretary David Cameron said on Wednesday that the West needs to, quote, win the argument for NATO all over again with a new generation, and quote, claiming that Europe faces the same situation as in 1938. Of course, numerous Western leaders have warned in recent weeks that Russia could attack NATO within a few years. Russian President Vladimir Putin has dismissed those claims as utter nonsense designed to beat the money out of the populations of Western countries. I tend to agree with Putin on this because I don't think, based upon their performance in Ukraine, that Europe has much to worry about. I also think that Europe isn't nearly as prepared for a war as they think they are. So if the Russians did show up in Europe and had Ukraine war level performance in Europe, that might not go so well for the Eastern Europeans. Um, but the reason I wanted to bring this up is not because we needed more talking points about the war in Ukraine, because we've got plenty of talking points about the war in Ukraine. The reason I bring it up is because biblically, when there's war, there's three things that go together with a war. Over and over and over again, the Father, the Creator, Abba Yahuwah or Elohim, the Lord your God, pick your phrase, says, I shall bring upon you the sword, scarcity of food, and pestilence. These three things. The sword, warfare, death. Scarcity of food, famine, and pestilence, plague and disease. Those three things go together. And then if you look historically at warfare, those three things go together. And so 
I would submit to you if NATO is making the argument that we are in a pre-war period right now, which honestly, it feels like that. But does it feel like that because we've all been successfully propagandized into believing that? Or is that the truth? I don't know. I, from where I sit in eastern Oklahoma, I have zero control over whether or not anybody goes to war except me. And I'm not going to war anytime soon that I'm aware of. So, um, but if NATO believes it's in a pre-war period, that also means historically we are in a pre-scarcity of food period and a pre-pestilence, plague and disease period. And so I wanted to throw that out there for y'all in your preparedness endeavors. I think a lot of us have focused and in some cases maybe focused too much on the war aspect, um, especially a lot of us that are potentially unqualified to even focus on that aspect in the first place. I got a rifle. I got a plate carrier. I got a war belt. I got a rucksack. Cool. Now what? I don't know, stack ammo till the cows come home. Okay, for what? I'm not really sure in case, you know, the Russians invade or the government feels froggy or whatever, right? Like Matt Bear said, not my lane. Okay, cool. So, all right, sword warfare, got it. Not, I mean, not got it, but check, that's a thing. And I think a lot of us have, focused on the firearms and warfare aspect of preparedness a lot, but to the detriment of scarcity of food and pestilence. Um, if you've been at this channel for any length of time, you know I'm all about food storage and not a little bit of food storage. We just uh, two days ago, I think it was two days ago, we as in like at the camp level, we picked up, I don't know if it was three or four pallets of wheat. It was a lot of wheat. Um, and I think the final cost was somewhere in the neighborhood of 12 bucks for a 60 pound bag. Now it's not triple cleaned, but it's also not inoculated. And it's also not sprayed with Grazon, AKA you can eat it. Um, you know, straight out of the field into a truck, into sacks, onto our truck. And it was about 12 bucks for a 60 pound bag. How did we get that deal? Uh, networking. We know people. And when one of our people reached out to us and said, Hey, I have an op an opportunity. Um, I have an opportunity to get wheat. Are you guys interested? Our answer was yes, hundred percent. Now, of all the people I know, I'm probably the last person of all the people I know that needs to buy more wheat and put more wheat in buckets. And I am still buying more wheat and putting more wheat in buckets. And I think while we still can, we should. Uh, CJ, the pre preparing prepper said, side question, did the mama bear tier on Patreon get taken off as an option? Yes. The barrier to entry is 10 bucks a month of Patreon. If you are signed up, have been signed up at the $1, $3, $5 tiers previously, that is grandfathered in. But if your subscription lapsed for any reason or you're signing up for the first time, it is now at $10 per month. And the reason it's at $10 per month, we deliver what I believe is an incredible amount of value on Patreon. And there are many other content creators, including in my space, who have tiers that are significantly higher than $10 per month. So uh, cost benefit analysis, it's um, attainable, but won't break the bank, but also more than adequate uh, for what you're getting. Matt Bear says the Pelt or Patreon exclusive live stream Thursday, which we're doing tonight at 630 Central is worth the $10 by itself. I appreciate that. Nancy C says, 100% worth the money for Patreon. Brett, worth every penny. Wisconsin Farm Boy, best 10 bucks you'll spend anywhere. Glock 316, a workman is worth his hire. White Fox, excellent value. Well, there you go. In the mouths of two or three. So, um, in any event, yes, that's why. Now, sword scarcity of food and pestilence. 
if you've been focusing on the sword and you got your Glocks or your SIGs or your Smith & Wesson M&Ps or your Staccatos, whatever you're into, and you got your rifles and your chest carriers and your plate carriers and your, you know, two court canteens and rucksacks and Merrills and Bellevilles and cool guy pants and all that. You got all that. Cool. And you're training with all that. Okay. I'm not saying that you shouldn't continue to train with all that stuff, but maybe quit. If you're just in the acquiring stuff game, if that's where you're at, I'm in the acquiring stuff game, maybe acquire a little bit less of that stuff or a whole lot less of that stuff and start thinking about acquiring scarcity of food stuff and pestilence stuff. Because biblically, these three things come together. Oh, yeah. Also, the Bear Independent Discord is a perk of Patreon. And there's a lot of people on there um, having a lot of very interesting conversations. So, um, scarcity of food. We, like Big We, just got, I think it was four more pallets of wheat. Um, and we are going to continue to do that, even though we, when it comes to food storage, we have a lot of food. A lot of food. Um, not only do I have food for my household for years, I have strategic reserves of food for my camp that can feed people at a camp level for years. And then you get into animal agriculture and vegetable agriculture. So your ability to produce food from the ground to <clears throat> grow a vegetable garden. Just grow some potatoes, man. Um, I've said a million times, but I'll say it again. If you live in a place where you just can't garden, get you three buckets, poke some holes in the bottom of the buckets. And if you can't afford buckets, use one gallon or number 10 cans or whatever you got, milk jugs, but whatever you got, okay? Fill them full of soil. What soil? I don't care. Dig it out of the backyard. Find some on the side of the road. Use leaf litter buy a bag of potting soil, go see a farmer, find dirt, fill with dirt, and you're going to plant yourself a tomato plant, a pepper plant, and a cilantro plant, okay? And in your cilantro plant, if you can get some little onion starts, put a few onion starts around the edge. And 90 to 120 days from now, you are going to make the best salsa you've ever had from scratch, okay? Remember your homework from Tuesday? Make pancakes from scratch? Apocalypse pancakes? Yeah, this is a little bit longer bit of homework. 90 to 120 days. Salsa. If you've never grown anything, it at least gives you the reps of beginning to understand the delayed uh, gratification of sowing versus reaping. All right, and then you can take what you learn from that and bring that to a piece of dirt anywhere and begin planting right like the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago the second best time is today so 150 gallon livestock watering trough there you go tommy i know a guy who at one time lived in a fifth wheel and was moving about the country and got a um plastic uh, masonry pans from home depot they used for mixing cement and uh mortar for laying brick in he got those, filled them with soil, and planted a garden in those. And then when it was time to move, he would set them in the back of his truck, cover them up, drive to the next place, set the fifth wheel up, pull his garden out, set it into the sun, and continue growing his garden that way. It, if you want to do it, it can be done. So, sword, scarcity, food, and then pestilence. Pestilence. Plague and disease. Um... OTC meds, you can still get them. You should if you don't have them. What kind of OTC meds? I'm not a doctor. I don't even play one on TV. But the basics for sure, you know, Advil, Tylenol, uh, both which are fever reducers, um, anti-diarrheal meds, um, that, that's pretty important because in a, a large amount of Earth's population poops themselves to death every year. Yeah, that happens. Uh, you're going to want water purification. That's a big deal when it comes to pestilence. What, whatever floats your boat. If you love Berkey, you hate Berkey. If you like white uh, life water, uh, if you don't like life water, if you're into 
vinegar, if what I don't care. Some way to process and purify water. It's a big deal. Uh, your Jace case from Jace Medical, right? Um, to have some prescription meds, especially if you're currently on prescription meds and you're going to need prescription meds to get through whatever the coming unpleasantness is, having a backup supply of that stuff, as well as antifungal, antimicrobial, anti antibacterial. Another part of pestilence that a lot of people miss is cleaning. Got to keep this place clean. Got to keep this body clean. Got to keep our tools clean. Flies, fingers, feces, right? These are the three things that are going to get us sick. Meat, sick, means of transmission. So we've got to keep this stuff clean. So if you like bleach, get bleach. If you don't like bleach, buy some hippy-dippy stuff from one of those green companies. Whatever you're into, I don't care. But you, you need a way to stay healthy. Okay. So I just wanted to bring that out with NATO. If NATO says that they are in a... Um, Pre-war posture. Understand that war is only one leg of the three-legged stool, biblically. It's sword, scarcity of food, and pestilence. Those three things always go together. Now, scarcity of food, we're already seeing in certain places. Like, look at what's happening in Haiti right now. This, air quote, revolution that, uh, uh, what's his name? Jimmy the Barbecue is uh, these gang wars that are happening there dude there's like 1.4 million people on the brink of famine in haiti gaza strip dude uh they went from relative food security to famine in five months five five months okay and we're all like there's the sky's gonna get dark on monday for a few hours it's the end of the world like they don't have any food to eat. Now, today's Thursday, tomorrow's Friday, the day of prep, and then Monday, the sky's going to go dark. So you got Thursday, Friday, Sunday to like put a little bit of food in your house in case the sky goes dark and the government decides, you know what, this is a perfect time to knock the grid offline or whatever. Um, not that I think that's going to happen, but if it did, you're covered. And see, and that's the thing that's the thing with preparedness. Preparedness is insurance, okay? It's to perpetuate normalcy for the people that we love. I have life insurance. I don't think I'm going to get hit by a Mack truck today. But if I do, and I shuffle off this mortal coil, uh, my family's taken care of. It's the same thing with preparedness, okay? If there's a, a massive external stimulus that causes us to change, fundamentally change the way we are doing life right now, I have a way to mitigate some of that risk. That's what preparedness is. So, sword, scarcity of food, pestilence. Remember those three things. Sword, scarcity of food, pestilence. And if you've been hyper fixated on the sword, I'm, I'm asking you to please consider scarcity of food and pestilence. If you've been hyper focused on food production, you should consider the sword and pestilence. If you've been hyper-focused on pestilence, you should consider the sword and scarcity of food. Right there, it's a three-legged stool. These three things go together. Cool. Um, next thing I wanted to look at, because this is, I've seen some uh, conjecture on the interwebs about this. Um, where did it go? Kevin Timmer, forging is a great skill to have. It is. Uh, they, you're surrounded by wild edibles. I don't care where you live, you are. I think uh, when we first moved here, we identified 19 different species of wild edibles just on our property. Uh, knowing what they are, where they are, when they're in season, how to prepare them, how to store them, all that's super duper important. There's an economy of scale to that, though. There's a reason why bands of hunter-gatherers didn't exceed a certain size, and it's because the larger your group gets, the harder it is to support off the land through foraging. If you're a singleton, it's easier because if the size of the berry bush remains as a constant, the more people are eating off of that berry bush, the fewer berries per person they get, right? The thinner the slice of the pie. So <clears throat> 7.4 magnitude earthquake in Taiwan. Um, for those of y'all that aren't tracking on this, they're on in eastern Taiwan. Taiwan's a little island, 
And that little island is situated to the east of China, to the south of Japan, to the north of the Philippines. And it's basically directly due south of South Korea. So no wonder China wants to control this island because it's right out there in uh, the South China Sea slash Pacific Ocean region. And it, it's it's right there. Like it's 100 miles from the Chinese mainland is Taiwan, which is not a small island. Um, but it's it sits right in the middle of it's like the gatekeeper of China, South Korea, Japan, Philippines, etc. cetera. Um, you know, you got Vietnam in there. So Taiwan on the eastern coast of Taiwan, not far from let's watch bear try to pronounce this word. Hualieno, Hualien, Hualien. I think it's Hualien. Maybe it's Hualien. I don't know. Anyway, uh, Taiwan's kind of shaped like a, like a yam. Okay. So imagine you're holding the yam upright on the easternmost side of the center of the yam is a 7.4 magnitude earthquake. Now, that region of Taiwan is not terribly, terribly populated because it's very mountainous and, and remote in that area. But um, where's the numbers? Where's the numbers? Uh, people are trapped in tunnels. Buildings are falling over. My wife's getting updates on her computer. Uh, killing at least nine and injuring more than 900. Some 127 people are trapped in collapsed tunnels and on mountain roads along the rugged coastline. Tremors were felt in the capital of Taipei, more than 100 kilometers away. And Taipei is um, in the north of Taiwan, come the north central of the yam. That, so, And if you were holding the yam perfectly upright, I'd turn it about 15 degrees clockwise. And that's what Taiwan actually looks like. So in any event, there was a big earthquake there. Um, and the people of Taiwan, the government of Taiwan has uh, reached out to its allies and friends on on X, formerly Twitter, which is interesting. The, the fact that Twitter has become a place where like politicians say words and then things actually happen as a result of the words that were said on Twitter slash X still boggles my mind. But anyway. Uh, what has been interesting, and the Babylon Bee had an interesting article on this, but it's it's very tongue in cheek and damn near accurate. Is essentially China said they'd be happy to send a hundred thousand soldiers to Taiwan to help with the cleanup. Like I bet you would. So uh, the Taiwanese have not invited China in to assist with the recovery effort. Um, because. What a great uh, cover for action to just roll Chinese soldiers into Taiwan and accomplish, you know, a fait accompli, right? China's wanted Taiwan forever and a day. Uh, the last, what, 50, 60, 70 years? Forgive my math. This is still my first cup of coffee. So we'll see. We'll see what happens with that. But something to be aware of. And that's essentially the coffee time with Bear that I have for y'all this morning. Mm, good morning to everybody in the chat. Shadow Rider said, California is overdue for 7 plus magnitude earthquake. Yeah, and there's a much higher population density in many, many areas of California. 40 million people live in California as compared to the eastern coast of Taiwan populated by mountains. So that's going to be a shit show if that happens in California. Uh, let's see. What do we got going on? Um, we already talked about Patreon. Uh, we already talked about Caleb House. Caleb with a K, CalebHouse.org. If you guys and girls want to plug into that. Grindstone Ministries. If you want a copy of the scriptures, you can buy one at cost at GrindstoneMinistries.com. All the links are down in the description. BT Dubs. And if you can't afford a copy of the scriptures, uh, just reach out to us via the website and I'll send you one at no cost. Our brother Rex's T-shirt and our brother Saw's T-shirt from Sanctified Supply Co., the uh, <clears throat> profits of which go to support Caleb House. There's links in the description down there for that as well. 
bearindependent.com. There's cool swag there if you want a coffee cup or a t-shirt or a hat or whatever. Um, Refuge Medical, uh, giving away a $10,000 night vision setup at Refuge Medical. All orders over 199 bucks are automatically entered to win. And that is now through the end of the month with the winner announced on May 1st. So if you've not already gotten in on that, it's a great time to do that. A lot of kits are in stock. The bare fact, the bare minimum, this kit, the ankle kit in stock. Guaranteed forever. This is the original prototype. This is the Gen Zero the first one that was ever made. I've been wearing this for months, daily. I don't know how many miles it's got on it now, but I'd say probably a couple hundred miles on it. You figure approximately three miles per day times, you know, three months, that's 270 right there. So we'll just, we'll just go with a couple hundred miles on it already. Um, and uh, it's fun. And if it wasn't fun, it's guaranteed forever. And it's, this has all kinds of stuff in it. So do you want to see? Matt Barry says, I love that ankle kit. I wear it 16 hours a day, six days a week. Oh, yeah, the cicadas are coming on the 8th as well. Cool. Hey, guys, the Earth is going to do Earth stuff. Best kit for airborne? Uh, probably a bear fac. It depends on where you're going to carry it. Um, cast iron chancellor i well i know for a fact people have jumped out of perfectly good airplanes with bare facts and have had not had issues so it's not certified jumpable but i know people who have jumped with it and have not had issues with it um we just had a bunch of guys jump out of an airplane with a bunch of our different kits and we're getting data back on all of that um sob right here good to go so positive velcro retention inner pouch with all your stuff in it boom there's my blowout kit and the sob weighs as much as one loaded ar-15 magazine so and it also depends on how you're jumping because let's say your ifax mounted on <clears throat> your belt or your um, load bearing equipment and your load bearing equipment is inside of your pack when you jump. Well, if your pack's squared away, as I understand it, when you jump, everything inside of that pack is therefore jumpable. And when you get to the ground, you can pull it out, put it on, good to go. So we all need that IFAC kit, says Don Don. Well, let me show you what's in the ankle rig. Okay. So right here, this is 160 bucks as shown with all the components in it with all everything that's in this. So we'll start with the things that are sticking at the top. This is a decompression needle for attention pneumothorax. This is a Sharpie for drawing mustaches on unsuspecting victims. Then in this pocket right here. And by the way, the way I like my kids to work is if I need this, typically speaking, trauma medicine happens on the ground, right? Like if if somebody needs this kit, they're probably on the ground or at least in a seated position. So I'm going to pull this off of my ankle and flop it on the ground next to the casualty. Okay. Then I can start popping my pockets open. So in this little pocket right here, this little piggy that went to market, I slid some band-aids in there. It doesn't come with band-aids, but you should slide some band-aids in there if you have children like I do. Got an S mark bandage. So this is like a stretch wrap and tuck tourniquet. It's just not branded stretch wrap and tuck tourniquet. Uh, and it can also be used to make a pressure bandage. It can also be used to make a sling if I need it. I've got uh, a five by nine gauze pad right here. Big piece of gauze. If I need a big piece of gauze, big piece of gauze, S mark, pressure bandage. I've got a pair of Halo chest seals and for Everybody who says, don't fold them, you'll break them. That tells me you've never opened a set of chest seals before. Because they're folded up inside of here. From the factory. Okay, so a pair of chest seals. So I've got massive bleeding and respiratory in that little pocket. Decompression needle, Sharpie. 
Then in this center pocket right here, pop this open. We've got a soft tee tourniquet. Committee on TCCC recommended windless tourniquet, the soft tee. Inch and a half wide, good to go. Love these things. Um, I love the form factor of these. And for like the Snake Staff Systems ETQ, the ETQ wide, which is an inch and a half, which is the recommended minimum width, according to the committee on TCCC, that's the same size as a soft tee. I know because I have one and I've compared them side by side. So the soft tee has tens of thousands of uses in the field. I'm going to go with something that has tens of thousands of uses in the field. So soft tee tourniquet. And then the last little pocket over here. Pop that open. And then what do I have in this pocket? Boom. Oh, look. Combat gauze for wound packing. Hemostatically impregnated gauze for wound packing. Oh, look. Compressed gauze for wound packing or dressing injuries. A pair of gloves because if it's wet and not yours, don't touch it. And coyote tan duct tape because duct tape rules the universe, according to Pastor Joe. And I believe he's correct. Um, you can do all kinds of things with duct tape. You can use this as tinder. You can improvise chest seals with this. I can make a sling with this. If I had to improvise a tourniquet with this, I could do that. Good to go. And that all that. All of it is inside of the ankle kit for 160 bucks, guaranteed forever. So that's the ankle kit. And uh, it's currently um, live at the website right now. But the um, SOB is also live. The bare minimum uh, is also live at the website right now. In a variety of cool tactical colors. And anyway. Oh, and um, they're doing an FJB promo right now. Um, I believe it's if you use code FJB, uh, you on any of our plastic kits, which includes buckets. So when I say plastic kit, I mean um, vacuum sealed kits like the bleeding prevention kit, the slick kit, EDC kit, sexy legs and khaki kit. The, um, what's that? The desk. The desk kit, uh, which is for your desk at work or school. Um, and then anything in a bucket, a wound care bucket, a postpartum bucket, a birthing bucket, all of that, you use code FJB, you get a refuge hat or a refuge tote bag. Mommy's Coffee Fund, Amanda's Homestead, 10 bucks. And so that's what's going on at Refuge. Recommend you guys and girls go over there, check it out, get some stuff while we have it in stock because, uh, Back to that whole sword scarcity of food and pestilence thing. Inventory has been obnoxious lately. What was the new kit boy on yesterday's refuge live stream? When I, I have one of those kits, there are 18 of those kits in existence. 15 of them were provided to legitimate operators to jump out of airplanes with and go test in the field for I believe it was a three-day FTX in the field to go run it and see what happens. Two of them just went to Moons Out, Goons Out with Ian McCollum from Forgotten Weapons and Brass Facts and Hop and Kit Badger and all the other channels that were there. T-Rex Arms was there. TNVC was there. Everybody else to go be tested on the civilian front um, for use under night vision out in the woods of Western Virginia. And uh, the last one is sitting in my team room on my desk right now. Bear, which is better, a cat TQ or a soft T? David, it completely depends on the application. So this is a cat, Gen 7 cat, new in the wrapper. We send these new in the wrapper so you know you're getting a new product. This is, the cat is probably the most intuitive windless tourniquet on planet Earth currently. And it's great. It has over 19,000 combat applications. We have a lot of data on this tourniquet. It's great and it works wonderfully. And we use it in most of our kits. Comma, the soft T is what IEDC. And the reason IEDC or everyday carry soft T through my sharpie on the ground. That could be a good country song. Ugh. Here's the soft T. Okay. 
the reason I EDC a soft T is look at the screen. Look at the size difference between cat and a soft T. Okay. So for low profile applications, like I literally carry a soft T in my front left pants pocket, in addition to the one that I have on my ankle. For low profile applications, I like the soft T more than the cat. The cat is more intuitive. It has more uses in combat. It has more saves because it's more widely distributed. The cat's a great tourniquet. It's a phenomenal tourniquet, but it's bigger, significantly bigger. Look at the screen than the soft T is. Okay. Can he do it? There we go. Significantly bigger than the soft T. The soft T is a great tourniquet. Would you bet your life on it? Yes, I EDC this tourniquet all the time. It takes more practice with a soft tee. It's not quite as intuitive as the cat is, but the form factor, and then the same price. And they're both made in America by reputable companies. TACMED Solutions makes the soft tee. Uh, North American Rescue distributes the cat tourniquet. Cat Resources is who produces the cat tourniquet. American companies. So better for what? Um, if it's load bearing equipment, vehicle applications, large first aid kits, um, cat tourniquet for me all the way. If it's low profile EDC or space and weight is at an absolute premium, uh, then I carry the soft tee. They're both good to go. So, and they're both available at Refuge Medical. Kevin Timmer says a soft tee in my pocket now. Yeah, they're they're just. Do you do first aid in person training for kids? We have in the past. We don't currently have kids classes on the schedule, but uh, I'll bring it up at our next executive meeting. Oh, we do have some dates left in July. I think it is for training, training in person training. Refuge responder. What are the dates for that? July 21st and 22nd. The May classes are sold out, but July 21st and July 22nd, we've got some classes available at Refuge Medical. I will drop the link in the description right here. So, <clears throat> so there we go. That's the show for today. That's what I got, y'all. I appreciate y'all very much supporting our businesses and our ministries and supporting the channel and everything that we do, tolerating my ridiculous schedule here as of late. Um, I promise you that uh, I'm doing meaningful things when I'm not here in front of the camera. Family and uh, ministry and business and sleeping when I can, drinking coffee when I can. So... Uh, let's talk to the father real quick, and uh, we'll call it a day. Sound good? Sounds good, man. All right, cool. Good morning, Father Yah. Father, thank you for all of our myriad blessings. Thank you for allowing us to wake up today. Thank you for little tiny people and for kiddos and for mama and for all of our other people and our, our land and all the things that we take for granted, Father. Thank you for those things. Thank you for thinking highly enough of us to give us the opportunity to steward these people and those blessings. Father, I pray that you'd be with everybody within the sound of my voice today, that you would help them keep their lamp lit, and that they would shine into the darkness, and the darkness would comprehend it not. We would be a good witness and a testimony of how awesome you are. Father, and any weapon formed against us wouldn't prosper, and anything that's not of you would flee in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Father, you're awesome. I'm glad we get to do this together, and I thank you for that. I pray that you'd please continue to protect, provide for, and bless these people, and that we would walk in your will to the best of our ability by the blood of your son. And ask these things in Yeshua's name. Amen.
I hope you boys and girls have a fabulous day. And I will see y'all when I see y'all. Shalom. <laughs>